Kiyoni said, my tradition of pre-Western Hawaiian culture stems mainly from the island of Molokai. In the oral traditions of Molokai, it is said that the sky father Wakea beheld the earth mother Hina, and because of her beauty, he slept with her, took her as a wife, and Hina became pregnant and soon gave birth to the island of Molokai. Thus the saying emerged, Molokai Nui A Hina, which means great Molokai, child of the goddess Hina. And this is an ancient saying that is still remembered today in songs of Molokai. Anciently, Molokai was a very unique island. It was considered to be an extremely wealthy island. In ancient Hawaiian standards, the wealth of a land was measured in the amount of food that the land could produce. In ancient Molokai, along the west and southern shorelines, in the shallows there, there were hundreds of fish ponds. Out of those fish ponds, there were 58 main fish ponds. The smallest of these measured an area of 10 acres. The largest of these 58 ponds measured an area of 500 acres. Therefore, the amount of food that the ancient inhabitants of Molokai were able to produce exceeded the needs of its people. And because of that great wealth and bounty that Molokai had, many times Molokai, a few times, were under the threat of war from the chiefs of Maui or Oahu who wanted to try and take the wealth of Molokai. So this prompted the people in each of their ahupua'a to prepare their people by teaching them different techniques and they developed styles of lua that were taught to the maka'ai nana that lived in particular in each ahupua'a. And out of this greatness of their um, ability to defend their ahupua'a in a moment's notice, an ancient saying emerged and that saying of Molokai was Molokai koa upu upei, which means Molokai with its great and dreaded warriors. This was also a special island because if you look on the map of Hawaii, Molokai is really the center of the island uh, chain. And being the center, this was an island that was chosen by kahuna of Molokai as well as other kahuna from the islands when they would come to that island to train and to learn different spiritual arts. And then these kahuna would go back to their respective islands to help their people. And as proof of that, another saying, ancient saying said in praise of Molokai was Molokai Puleo'o, which means Molokai with its powerful prayers. And <clears throat> the things that, the one topic that I was asked to share with all of you today concerning ancient Molokai was the manner in which the ancient people governed themselves. And they governed themselves by what they call the Aha or Aha councils. Now, this form of government existed throughout all the Hawaiian islands and it ended on all the islands during, or it began to end during the 8th and 9th century when um, people came from Lower Polynesia, bringing the Ali'i system, bringing their new kapus, bringing the god Ku, and bringing human sacrifices to Hawaii, and overpowering the people here, and the government and the manner in which the people governed themselves changed. But, on the island of Molokai, because of its strong kahuna tradition, they maintained the Aha councils all the way until the time of Kiha'api'ilani, the son of Pi'ilani of Maui, when he was the one who was able to overthrow uh, the people of Molokai. Now let me explain what the Aha councils were, were. First, the word Aha. As we all know, the, the word Aha is referred to a type of cord, a type of woven cord. Now, <clears throat> this is the mana'o of what an Aha was and why they chose that as an example. When you take the raw material from the olona and you weave it 
into a stream. That stream is called an aho. And then you take eight aho and you weave it together in a tight weave. And those eight single aho strings woven together forms the aha. Now the mana'o of the kupuna is those separate cords represents all of the different mana'o or people that are brought together with their understanding, with their spiritual abilities, with their um, knowledge from whatever profession they come in into the and how they serve the people in their ahupua and they are woven together to form this aha cord. That aha cord represents maintaining the pono in the land and unifying the land. In ancient Molokai, each ahupua'a had its own aha council and that aha was called aha kiole. And the aha kiole, each aha kiole were made of practitioners and kahuna that served and lived in that ahupua'a. If that ahupua'a had a fish pond in it or had fishermen, one representative was taken into that council. If they had kahuna in there that practiced healing, one came into that council. If they had a taro farmer, one came. If they had canoe builders, one came. Whatever profession existed in that ahupua'a, they came and sat in that aha kiole, and they took care of the affairs of the people that live in their ahupua'a. And they were the ones responsible for maintaining the pono in the land. And our kupuna were very wise in doing that, for who would know better how to take care of the sea except the fishermen? Who would know better how to take care of the forest except the kahunas or the tree, uh, you know, the canoe builders that use the forest? Who would know how to maintain the water for taro planting but the taro farmers themselves? And so, as many ahupua'a as there were in the moku was as how many aha kiole they were. Then, in the moku, in ancient Molokai, there were four moku. Each of the moku picked one representative from the aha kiole to sit on a second aha that was called the um, aha moku. And this aha took care of the affairs when needed, when it concerned all of the people in their moku, they took care of the affairs there. And then, like on ancient Molokai, they had four moku, then they would form a third council, which was called the aha kea. And these were chosen either from one or two people from the mokus, from the moku councils to come and to sit on this aha, uh, aha kea council. But in Western, government, the power for the final decision is from the top down. But in the AHA councils, it was upside down. The power to make the final decisions lay with the people in the AHA Keole, in the AHA Pua. The AHA Moko or the AHA Kea had no power over the AHA Keole. The people that lived, the people whose decisions would be affected were the ones that made the final decision.